So as we saw, probing techniques are really important and there's a huge range of different probing techniques. But what is also important is the tactic you use while probing. And there hasn't been much written about it, except for people writing, well, I did it my way and my way was the best way. And we could pose a question with that. Because this reflection is really worthy in your own research, but it's not so worth, worthy in a how to interview book. Because, well, maybe my way is not your way. So we should think about what does work. And in many how to interview books, people write about rapport. And there's quite well established notion that rapport is good. And I think, I truly believe that you need rapport. Otherwise, an interview won't work. And you need techniques. You need probing techniques. And a good interviewer knows which te techniques to use, but also which techniques are available. And a good interviewer varies using different techniques. But there's not much written about the stand taken while probing. Because there can be huge differences in different stands taken while probing. And therefore, I did an experiment to see what probing tactic works and how does it work. So what probing tactics did I distinguish? I distinguished three different probing tactics. And the first is the accommodating tactic. The accommodating tactic is the tactic that is usually trained to novice interviewers. I was trained in an accommodating tactic while studying. And what is this accommodating tactic entails? Well, you do not show, you're very implicit on whether you accept or not accept the answer of a respondent. So you let that in the vague. What you show is that you want more information and you show some neutrality. You show that you accommodate the informant, the interviewee, the respondent to talk freely. Tell me your story and I don't judge. That's what you show. The second tactic is a more smiling tactic. You see, the first had a neutral face, the second tactic has a more smiling face because this is what people usually do. Many interviewers, they watch Oprah Winfrey, so they act like Oprah Winfrey. So what they do is they start encouraging people saying, oh, that's very interesting. Oh, could you continue about that? Can you explain it? Oh, wow, cool and so on and so forth. So people are very using the rapport, but also using the rapport in, in probing, using a very personal style that I call encouraging. Then you take the answer for granted and you're pretty explicit about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that must have been terrible for you. Stuff like that. The third tactic is a little different. The third tactic you know from news interviews because this man looks a bit sad, but it's more a challenging tactic. In this challenging tactic, you do not take the answer for granted, but you probe and you challenge and you explicitly show that you don't take it for granted simply. You just continue questioning the respondent. For instance, you just told me something else. Wait a second. First you said this and now you say that. Could you explain it to me? Or why? What do you mean with this? I don't get it. When you use sentences like this, you show that you take the answer serious, but not for granted. And that's the third tactic I looked at. These interviews were about uh, social ca categorization. So they were about categories people use. Categories on Amsterdamers, categories of friends, friendship and, and friends and acquaintances, and category, uh, the categories uh, we use in the Netherlands for immigrants, allochtone. Um, so schematically, it looks like this. What are the effects of probing tactics on quality and content? And how did I research this? Well, I did this using this experiment. I trained 12 interviewers to probe using an accommodating tactic. I trained 12 interviewers to probe using an encouraging tactic. And I trained 12 interviewers to probe with a challenging probing tactic. And I expected beforehand that, especially because 
these interviews were in interviews with people from Amsterdam. So beforehand, I expected that the challenging tactic would work best. Amsterdamers seem to be pretty direct, so they like to be challenged. They like that an interviewer probes them challengingly. At least that's what I expected. And others would say, no, no, not at all, not at all. An encouraging interviewer would work way better because this encouraging interviewer uses a lot of rapport and says, oh, that's so interesting and, and so on and so forth. Whereas my former lecturers would say, the accommodating tactic would work best because you give space and opportunity to answer to the uh, interviewee. So what are the effects? What, this is just one of the many variables I used in order to check for the amount of information. And in this case, for the, the broadness of the information, the, the number of different predicates used with categories. And as you can see, it did not matter all. And this was not just for this variable, for this indicator of quality, it was for all indicators of quality and all indicators of content. It did not matter. On average, there are hardly any differences in the effects of the three different probing tactics on the quality and the content information. Now, that was a shock for me. Real, a real shock. Because these interviews are very idiosyncratic interviews, aren't they? Because it's really dependent on the interviewee and the interviewer and the interaction between both. And things go wrong in interactions all the time. And interviewers have to repair stuff. And if they do this repairing, this probing, if they do this challenging, it would lead to a total different interview with a total different kind of information. I would guess, I guessed beforehand, but it, it wasn't. And this means very, very, very good news for qualitative researchers doing interviews, because it means that it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter whether you challenge someone, whether you're encouraging, whether you're accommodating, it doesn't matter at all. Because as long as you use your techniques properly, as long as you take care for rapport, uh, as long as you give the interviewees the opportunity to, to, to answer properly, it, as long as you give space to give a complete argumentation, a complete answer, that's enough. It doesn't matter whether you probe encouragingly or whether you probe accommodatingly.